Hello and welcome back. For the next couple of episodes, I'm going back to the sci-fi range and uh, in this first one, we'll be having a go at making some little bunks, like this one that you can see here. And we'll also be making some lockers to go along with them. And as usual, you can find a link to the PDF file for these down in the description. So let's make a start. Okay then, the first thing we'll need to do is take one of these side panels and glue that to some foam core or similar. Um, the stuff I'm using here is the thinner 3mm thick stuff. And when that's dry, we'll cut that to size with a sharp knife and do try to make sure that you are using a sharp or a new blade, um, otherwise it can sometimes snag on the foam core. Anyway, next we'll cut out another of the side panels, this time exactly to size, and all we're going to do with this is glue it to the back of the first piece, um, just using a regular glue stick so that it ends up looking something like this. So uh, there you go. Though I do want to point out that there is a top and a bottom to these pieces and uh, the easiest way to see which way up they go is to look out for a slightly darker shadow here. And uh, obviously the shadow points towards the bottom. But uh, yeah, next we'll take this texture here and from that we're going to cut out a couple of strips that are the same size as the thickness of the foam core that we just used. So. Uh, in this example, that's going to be 3mm wide. And all we're going to do with these is apply some glue to the back and then stick them to the edge of the foam core so that the pattern on the sides, that matches the pattern on the front and the back. And uh, we're also going to make sure that the longer side of the strip, that covers the top of the foam core as well. Basically, we want it to end up looking something like this. Then we'll just do the exact same thing on the other side, which is what you can see me doing here. So uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward and uh, with any luck, when we're done, we should be left with this kind of thing that you can see here. And we will of course need to make two of those, one for each end of the bed. Okay then, the next thing we're going to do is glue one of these textures to some thin card, but uh, before we cut it out, we'll first score it along these lines here, so that when we do cut it out, it makes it easier to bend into this kind of shape. So. Uh, yeah, that's going to be the main part of the bed. And for the pillow, we'll do a similar thing again. So glue it to some card, score it along the guideline, cut it to size, and then bend it along that scored line. Plus, we'll also need to glue these two pieces to some thicker card. Um, I'm just using some offcuts from my last project for this. And we'll cut those to size as well. Okay, so once we've done all of that, we'll add a bit of hot glue to one of the inside edges of the main pillow piece and glue one of the tiny end pieces into place. So, something like this. And I really should have zoomed in for this part, but uh, hopefully you can see what I've done there. And, uh, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side, so that when we're done, we end up with something like that. And, uh, and that's the pillow done. Then, all we'll need to do is add a generous blob of hot glue to the underside of that and stick it near to one end of the bed. So that we're left with this kind of thing. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but mine is around a millimetre away from the edge. And uh, as you've probably guessed, we'll need to make two of those. Okay, the last thing we'll need to do is glue four of these little pieces to some kind of card, uh, it doesn't really matter what kind, and, and cut those to size. And for this next part, I like to use a bit of PVA glue, so if I bring in one of the end pieces, um, all we'll need to do is put a bit of PVA on the back of one of these little brackets, we'll call them, and, uh, and glue that onto one side of the end piece, so that one of the longer edges, that's placed on top of the red line on the end piece texture, um, like you just saw. Then we'll do the same thing with another of these little bracket things, and uh, I should also point out that we are trying to get them centralised as well. So. There you go, hopefully that made sense, but uh, if it didn't, here's a little graphic to show it a bit better. And, uh, and yeah, we'll need to do that with both of the end panels, and as you can see, on the first one I did it on the side with the computer screen, and on the second one I did it on the opposite side, but uh, it's really up to you. Okay, now if I bring in the other pieces that we made, we can then apply a line of hot glue to the inside of one of the ends, there you go, and stick that in place so that it kind of wraps around one of those little bracket pieces that we, uh, that we just added to the side panel. 
And with any luck, that should result in something like this. And if I turn it upside down, you can hopefully see how that little bracket piece has worked. Anyway, if I just quickly do the same thing again to the other side, then this is how it should end up looking. Something like that. And all that's left to do now is glue the other bed into place. And the way I like to do this is to kind of thread it between the two end panels first, so that it's sort of roughly in the right kind of area, and then apply some hot glue to both ends, and then fold those ends around the two bracket pieces. And with any luck, we should end up with a nice set of bunk beds that looks something like you can see here. Though we can change things up a bit and make a slight variation of this, so uh, that's what we'll have a go at doing next. Okay then, so if instead we want to add some storage above one of the beds, we can glue this texture to something cereal box style card, and once again, score it along these lines before cutting it out. However, when we do cut it out, we'll also need to decide on which three sections we want to use. So, in this example, I've gone with these three here. So, a computer screen with some drawers on either side, which we can then bend along the scored lines to make something like that. Right then, next we'll need to glue two of these bracket pieces to some more scrap card again, and obviously cut those to size, and we'll also need two more of the smaller bracket pieces as well. Then, using a bit of PVA like before, we'll glue these little pieces into place, except that this time we'll replace the one at the top with this larger trapezium shape. So, this is the kind of thing that we're aiming for, and uh, again, we'll need to make two of those. There you go. Okay then, so, when gluing these together, I find it's best to just add some hot glue to the central portion of one edge, um, if that makes sense, and just glue that into place first. Um, I mean, I'll still bend the edges over, but uh, that's really just to make sure that it's in the right place. Then, I'll do the same thing again on the other side, so just gluing the central portion onto that little bracket piece, and, uh, and when that's done, it's easy enough to just fold the sides back out, add some glue to the edges, and glue those down in place. And, uh, as you can see, I'll just repeat the process on the other side. And if it's all gone according to plan, you should end up with a nice little storage area above the bed. And speaking of which, we can then glue the bed itself into place, um, just like we did before. Though, it can be a little bit fiddly, so if you can think of a better assembly method for these, then please do let me know in the comments. Anyway, once that's done, here's the finished piece. So, uh, yeah. That's an alternative way of putting the bed together. But uh, if you still want a bit more variety, then there is one more little detail piece that we can still add. Okay then, so for this last detail piece, we'll glue this texture to some thin card again, and score it along this line, cut it out and then fold it along that line. And we'll also glue these two side panels to some thin corrugated card or similar, and cut those to size as well. Then. Just like we did with the pillows, we'll glue the side panels into place, just using the glue gun again. So, uh, yeah, you can pretty much see what I'm doing here. Um, as I say, it's the same thing we did earlier in the video. Anyway, when that's done, we should end up with a piece that looks something like this. So, uh, just a basic little keyboard thing. And all I'm going to do with this is add a generous blob of hot glue to the inside, and then stick that to the outside of one of the beds. You know, beneath one of the computer screens that are part of the main texture. So that, when it's done, it ends up looking like that. So, just a little computer terminal at the end of the bed. And as far as the bunks go, that's them pretty much done. So, uh, as you can see, there's a couple of different ways to add a bit of variety. But uh, we also have some lockers to make, so let's make a start on those. Okay, so these aren't particularly hard to make. We'll first just glue this texture to some more cereal box style card, and again, we'll score it along these lines that you can see here. However, it's up to you exactly how to make them. Um, you could make one big block of six, or six individual lockers, but uh, in this example, I'm going to make a row of three. Um, these three in particular, which, as you can see, I've already cut to size. Okay, next we'll need to glue a couple of the side textures to some corrugated card, or foam core, and cut those to size as well. Then we can bend the first piece along the scored lines, 
and, uh, and then we'll apply a line of hot glue along the inside of the front and the top of the locker and then carefully stick one of the side panels into place like you can see me doing here. So there you go, something like that. Then we'll do the same thing again on the opposite side. So just gluing the front and the top, which should end up looking like this. And all we'll need to do then is run a couple of lines of glue along the back two edges and fold them into place. And that's that done. Um, that's all there is to it really. However, you've probably noticed that I did choose part of the texture where there's a door missing and I've included this just so that we can add a bit of variety to the lockers as well. So in this instance, I'll also need to add a separate door. So here I've just glued a couple of the door textures to some thin card and cut those out. And if we want a door that's wide open, we can take this piece and glue it into place so that it looks something like this. Or if we want a door that's only slightly ajar, we can take this piece and glue it something like that. And that's what I'm going to do, but uh, instead I'll use the door that's got a few bullet holes. So I'll just add a blob of hot glue to the side where the hinges would be and stick the door on top so that it looks like it's not being closed properly. And there you have it, there's the finished piece. And while having one door slightly open like this, it doesn't really add all that much to the piece. Um, I kind of like it, and for the tiny bit of extra effort that it takes, I think it's worth it. So uh, yeah, I think that's everything done. So coming up in a second is a picture of them in action, and uh, as you can see, I've also included a couple of small posters in the PDF, which, well, they're just useful for adding even more variety, uh, if that's something you're interested in. And I also want to say thanks to the guys over at AWA Game Design for sending me these miniatures to take a look at. Um, they're part of a Kickstarter that they're running at the moment, and uh, if you like the look of them, I'll have a link to a blog post that I've made about them in the description. So, all that's left to say is all the usual nonsense about liking and sharing and so on, but uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I don't do much sci-fi stuff, so hopefully this is scratching that itch that some of you might have, and, uh, and yeah, let me know what you think of these down in the comments. So, thanks again, and bye for now.